Well, hello there. I was out here last night actually looking for bugs to put into the spider tank so my spiders are kept nice and healthy and well fed. And along here, I made a horrible, horrible discovery. Warning the spider warning on this video has been removed, and as always, this video is highly educational. Might be worthwhile seeing the data today. It's the 8th of November. Because I'm being inquisitive, look who has come down to join me. There goes Fluffy, isn't she stunning? Uh, along here, which is normally the Redback Spider Area Problem Zone, it has been very, very clean. Mind you, I hit that with flamethrower on regular occurrences. I tend to be very thorough when I come through and look for the spider web. I know what to look for. Mind you, there has been a bit of a mystery spider around as well. And last night I came across uh, what I see right there, and it ain't a good thing to see. Yes, yeah, so we're going to come along and inspect in here and get rid of what is living in here. I did take some photographs last night, we'll take a look at those. And hopefully you can see what's living here. Yes, it's a redback spider. And we're going to see if we've got egg sacs here and just see what has been going on. This is a bit of a curious one because normally the spiders like to get into pots where they can reside and hide up inside the design of pots. I've seen that way too often. On this case here, it looks like the spider is recluse between two pots here and the web network is actually quite extensive. There's a web that comes right out here to pieces of grass. There's an area here where it looks like it's caught something. You can see the super sticky stuff that they put out when they capture something. And really there's a whole arc here of web. That's actually quite hard to see, but I can see it in real life that the spider would use as a area to catch critters. Just to explain this area in the backyard, it's actually right near some compost heaps. If I just peek the camera around through there, maybe you can see it. So this is really a hive activity of small critters and bugs. Bit of a watering system through here, and luckily for me, uh, we had a ton of rain last night, so the ground is really, really wet. So you know what I'm gonna be doing? I'm not gonna mince about trying to capture this spider. I'm gonna hit it with my biggest weapon. That's right, great big flamethrower. And don't worry, Mrs. Cow is quite used to that activity. I'm just going to unpick this very, very carefully. I can see spider web there, but I think that is friendly spider. In fact, the spider is there. That's one we want to keep. Okay, there are good spiders and there are bad spiders. We must always remember that. Now, just as I move those pots there, there's one thing that I look out for that often says to me redbacks can't hang around. You know what that is? Ants. I'm not seeing any ants down here. I just lift up part of mummy's watering system here. I don't want to incinerate that or I will be in trouble. Now the next part I'm going to move is this one and I know the spider's nest actually resides down the back there and we're going to start to see all the horrible horrificness that uh, happens down there. And I'll just move this one out nice and slowly because this spider is going to start to realise it's well and truly under attack. Okay, that really has opened up the world for me, which is what we need to see. I can also see a couple little snails there. Hey, aren't they cuties? Love those little baby snails. But just tracking across from the snails, we get into a bit of a shady, a wonky zone for lighting. There's the redback spider's lair. Yes, I can see one egg sac there. Okay, I've cranked the camera's ISO right open so we can see into dark areas quite nicely. There is the redback spider inside its lair. The egg sac is there, as I said before. It is a large female redback spider. Obviously, it is a breeder. It has actually made quite an extensive web network in there. And I'm very sorry, but this little girl has got to go. I don't want her around. Yes, it's a bit of a different one I can tell you. It's not often I've seen them build their lair, and that is it there in that shape. It's like a great big cone of web, and it's been built on the side of a ceramic pot. The first time I've seen that. Maybe because I've been wiping out all the other zones these spiders like to be in there, adapting to new areas. Yes, one thing about these spiders, they are highly adaptive. As for the egg sac there, I'd say it's fairly freshly made. Uh, before they hatch, they get quite dark and they can often get uh, misshapen. But when they've emptied out, they turn back to white again. I'm glad I caught this girl before that egg sac opened up. And now that I have moved that pot to the side and the redback spider was in the zone, I'm not seeing any ants here. So it's starting to really build a case that I say that when you see ants around, you won't see spiders. When you see no ants, you'll get them spideys. I'll just put a bit more of a twist in this pot and uh, we'll say goodnight to her. Okay, I've turned the pot around. I think she's getting a bit restless. It's time to say goodnight, sister. Okay, this is going to happen very fast. Goodnight, sister. Dusted. Oh. 
Now it was nice and quick and uh, well very easy to do and I like it okay because it kills the spider really fast. Let's take a look at the spider. Crikey Charlie, this is actually quite a big one. When they get crispy critter it's like they've been dropped in hot oil and it looks like those cooked spiders that you see in certain countries. And also grab uh, the egg sac there. Okay. So there's our beautiful redback spider. Uh, I would say she wasn't far off laying another egg sac. In a spider season, they can lay up a number of egg sacs. It all depends on how much food they get. Okay, you can see a wonderful red stripe on the back there. The egg sac has actually got, well, the eggs in it. it the, there's no sort of sign of spiderlings. I'm seeing eggs coming out of this. So thank goodness I got that in its very early stages. And really, some people are gonna say, oh, but it's so sadly over. I'll tell you what, these spiders are nothing but pests and they're very, very dangerous pests in the garden. I'm not sure whether you'll see it. Uh, they're very small, but the eggs are actually coming out of the egg sac because part of the egg sac opened up while it was in the flames. Uh, egg sacs can carry hundreds upon hundreds of little baby redbacks. And I think a nice logical thing to do with that there is find an ant nest somewhere so they can have a feed. I tend to always have luck looking for ants underneath these blocks here. It's almost like pick any block and find an ant nest. Let's take a look under here. Aha, so I struck ant gold. Looks like a bit of a nursery I've uncovered there and they're frantically taking the baby somewhere else. But I do come with gifts from heaven, manna from the garden. The main course is a redback spider. The dessert is a redback spider egg sac. So I wonder how long it's gonna take the ants to communicate and say, hey, this most miraculous meal has just turned up in the nursery. How stupendous. I can see uh, bits in the spider moving already. I did one of these videos, I think with black ants, and it was just amazing how the ant colony worked together. They're almost like the Borg, when you see the way ants work, quite scary. And uh, when they want to move mountains, crikey Charlie, uh, they work together and they pull off astonishing feats that you would never think ants could do. That's not me with a little fishing line making the spider move, that's the ants manipulating that spider body. I wonder if I pull it apart piece by piece and take it down to the ant nest like I saw with those black ants. I'll tell you what I will do, I'll just quickly set up a time lapse camera on this and see if I can't capture what goes on there. Okay, under variable lighting conditions and also only a few hours left in the day, I did watch the red ants do their best to pull apart the red back spider, but I didn't see the organized ferocity that I saw with the black ants when I witnessed them pull apart a red back spider. It was months back now, and the black ants were able to achieve that literally within 20 minutes. These red ants were taking hours to do, well, what seemed like very little. Maybe the ant experts out there can say, oh, but the red ants are this style of ant and they do things like this, and the black ants are a totally different critter. Let's hope the ant experts out there fill in the gaps. As for why this redback spider was found where it was found, mind you, I did a very thorough spider search and destroy mission only a few weeks earlier. I don't understand why. Maybe they're wandering in from neighbors' yards. I know one of my direct neighbors has stacks of council bins. You may see them in the background of other videos. Possibly that's a big spider nest area, but that's a spider mystery. A little bit like the redback spider inside Mrs. Cow, that spider seemed to appear from nowhere. Maybe the spider experts can explain that one. And I know you'll ask, Leo, why didn't you save the redback spider plus the spider egg sac and put it into the spider convalescence tank? Well, let me show you some footage from that tank. I'm doing some time-lapse study of some of the spiders in there at the moment. I believe the spider tank has got a nice balance of spiders in there at the moment. If I put another alpha female in there, it's going to really upset the spider apple cart. The one alpha female that's in that tank is a very dominant, very fertile, would be one word for it, female redback spider. It's an absolute reminder to me just how many egg sacs a well-fed female redback spider can lay up in very short time. And remember, I'm always doing the redback spider mathematics where one well-fed female can generate literally multiple thousands of spiders in very short time. But for me, in understanding the scary spider maths related to the way they populate has really made me understand how to control the redback spiders in my backyard. And finally, I did see some queries about the jumping spider, the jumping spider that kills redback spiders. What happened to it? Well, sadly, this is what I have to report to you. The redback spiders have killed the jumping spider. So there is yet another redback spider myth which has been totally busted. In a funny way, I'm not at all surprised.